family and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hi, I just want to give you guys a little warning. It is very gloomy and cloudy outside, so excuse the lighting. I, I mean, I'm trying my best to make what it is, but it's super gloomy and dark outside, so this is what the lighting is. Uh, it's been raining the past 24 hours, <laughs> so it's, yeah, pretty dark outside. And the other thing I want to say is I am currently battling some sort of cold or sickness, so if I sound a little stuffy <laughs> or sick, that is why. And it's not fun, but we're here, and this is probably the best I've been feeling throughout the week, so here we are recording this video, and still a little congested, but we're just gonna push on through, so. So let's get into the fun part of this video. Today we are going to be doing my July wrap-up as well as my August TBR. So for those of you who do not know, last month I used a bingo card to determine what books to read and I will do the exact same thing this video as well. But we're first gonna go over the books that I did read um, in the month of July. Alright, so I had seven books on my TBR for the month of July, uh, but I only got two five of them, and the two that I did not read were The Selection by Kira Cass and The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Kloon. So those are the two books I did not get to this month, um, so they will just go back into the, the pile. And maybe I will read them this month or so. We'll see. Um, but the books I did read, starting from the beginning of the month till the end of the month, we'll just talk about the book, if I liked it, what I rated it, all of that. So let's just keep it rolling. All right, here's the stack of books that I did read throughout the month of July, um, which I think July might have been my best reading month just because... I read a lot of books. Usually I don't read a lot of books. Maybe I read like three books a month, but I'm pretty proud of myself of reading five, and I think vacation really helps me um, read, just because what else are you going to do in on the beach or like in a hotel room um, <laughs> besides read? So the first book of the month that I read was Powerful by Lauren Roberts. Um, this is the novella in between Powerless and Reckless. And I was very, very excited to get back into this world and um, to learn more about Peyton's best friend, Adina. And so that is her story. This is her story um, about Adina and what is going on with her during the trials that Peyton is in. Does that make sense? I think it does. Um, but I rated this a 5 out of 5 stars because... It did everything. It made me giggle, it made me laugh, it made me cry, it tore my heart out. I can't wait, I think I said this in my vacation vlogs, like I can't wait to get paperback versions of all of these books because I just want to reread them and highlight so many quotes in this because <sighs> I can't. If I read the quote I'm thinking of in this book, I will start crying because that's what I did when I read it the first time and then I kept trying to reread it and I started tearing up so five out of five um for powerful and so right after powerful of course I had to get into Lauren Roberts new release of July which was reckless um which is the second book in the trilogy um going into this I was terrified of like what is going on what what are what are we getting ourselves into and this basically builds Kai's, Kai and Peyton's relationship. That's like this whole book is just focused on their relationship, which I absolutely loved because I love them together. Like, I love them together. I love Kai. I just, ugh, everything about it, love. So if you know where I'm going with this, this was also a five-star book for me. Um, the plot twist, the plot twist at the end, and well not plot twist, just like the cliffhanger, I should say, cliffhanger. Now I have to wait until next year to read the next book. Thank you Lauren Roberts for doing that. I will be tortured until then. But again, just like Powerful made me laugh, made me cry. Um, I just love seeing the character of development and like seeing where the story is going to go next and it kind of had that shock value at the end too. So. Five stars for that. Now, 
this is kind of when it starts going downhill because we had two good five star reads for the month of July and then we read Nine Perfect Strangers by Leanne Moral Morality. Um, I've heard of this author, so I picked up this book thinking maybe she's a good, like, thrillery, mystery type book. And I'll just say I was kind of bored. So this is about, um, nine strangers. They go to a health resort in the middle of nowhere where they all have, like, different problems they want to fix or they're all there for, like, different reasons. And so throughout the book, you're in different point of views of all those nine strangers. Basically, the twist was kind of crazy when we got to it but then as the story progressed I was like what is going on like it wasn't that crazy where I was like oh my gosh but I was just like what huh I don't know it was not like my favorite thriller mystery type book um so I did rate this a three star um just because I, I did enjoy it like I at some points the first half I did want to just like not read it but I pushed through and I'm glad I did because once we get to that like 50% mark where you find out like this huge thing that's happening then the story kind of picks up but besides that um three stars for nine perfect strangers the next book I read was the fine print by Lauren Asher um this is the first book in the dreamland billionaire series um this follows rowan one of the kane brothers um so each brother has a book um what they have to do is their grandfather just passed away and they left he left like letters for them where they have to do something in order to get the money from the will or something like that um so this follows rowan and what he needs to do from like his grandfather's wishes and he meets um zara zara Zara, yeah, that's how you pronounce it, <laughs> um, who it works at Dreamland. And so, he, trope, boss, co-worker, I don't know, that type of thing, grumpy, sunshine <laughs> type the deal. But I was really excited to read this because I never read a Lauren Asher book and I've heard her books are really fun and just like, I don't know, I've heard a lot of good things about her and so I wanted to start reading some of her books and... I read and then I kind of listened to this book as an audiobook and I did like it. I don't know, I just was like not feeling the romance of it that much. So I did give it only a three and a half star, but I will continue on the series and I do want to read her other books like the Dirty Air series, right? Like Throttled and I do want to read her new series that she came out with where it's like love redesigned and all of that too. So she is an author. I do want to like continue to read because I do like her writing style and I do like her characters I like Zara loved her like her pin collecting love that like little niche like special thing about her so um yeah so that was a three and a half star for me and the last and final book that I finished up literally the last day of July was Kit McBride gets a wife now this <laughs> surprise me because I was going into this as like romance cowboy romance boom was I wrong first of all this is like a historical fi fiction so it takes place in 1886 okay and you're not just getting m male main character and female main characters point of views you are getting like everyone's point of view basically you're get so let me backtrack starts off you meet Kit, Morgan, and Junebug. There's also a couple of other brothers, but they're not really in this book, but there's a couple of other brothers, okay? And they're all the McBrides. And so Junebug, you find out, is like the youngest sister. She lives with a bunch of boys, and she hates doing all the house chores. So what she does is she puts an ad in the matrimonial news to get his her brother a wife so a male order bride basically um after she does that we meet maddie mooney who is an immigrant from ireland who is a maid and she's taking care of this one woman and the one woman sees the ad and they go and travel to meet kit mcbride it's it's like a fun story for sure 
but like I don't know it's just like there wasn't a lot of romance in it and I think I was expecting a lot more romance but it was more like just story just like plot of what was going on because Maddie was pretending to be this fancy lady who it wasn't actually Matt Maddie it was this other girl yeah it's just like uh not fake like a fake identity type thing so I don't know it was not my favorite I was expecting more romance and all that so I do I did only rate this like a three star I was expecting more like cowboyish because like of the cover what did you not expect cowboy but they live out in the mountains and they're like mountain men and he's actually a blacksmith not even a cowboy so like I don't know I just had different expectations for this book um, but again it was a fun book to read I did the one pet peeve I do have is the chapters were so long and I hate I don't know I like short chapters because I feel like I'm progressing faster but sometimes like when there's long chapters I'm like am I even getting through this book but yeah that is the last and final book I read in June so just to recap I read let's see one two two fantasy books one mystery into romance books if you count Kit McBride as a romance book <laughs> possibly um so again not that bad of a month for did I say June I meant July if I said Jul June so yeah let's go ahead and get into what books I'm going to be reading for the month of August all right so again if you are new I do use um a bingo card to help pick the books that I will be reading for the month that we are in so the bingo card is from destiny sidwell's uh discord page so i will link that down below if you would like to join uh just a little shout out to her discord i really enjoy it it's a great place to connect with other readers just like me <laughs> um there's books of the month there's discussion pages there's buddy reads uh reading sprints readathons 24 hour readathons week long readathons um it's just like i don't know just a fun way to like connect with other book girlies so um i get the bingo card from there and it has different tbr prompts and what i do is i look at what books i have in my physical tbr <laughs> and i try to pair up the prompts to the books that i have if that makes sense so here's this month's bingo card for August. Okay, so for our first prompts, a book with a person on the cover. I didn't know what it meant by that because I did people and I also did cartoon people. So the first one going back into the lineup is The Selection by Kira Cass. We also have The Last Chance Library by Freya Sampson. Again, there's like little people on here. We got Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth uh, Lim person again didn't know if it meant real people or cartoon people we got love on the brain by Allie Hazelwood we have plot twist by Erin La Rosa and the last one we have is a uh, funny story by Emily Henry so uh, we are going to go ahead and what I do is I put them in a wheel like this and we're gonna spin until there is one book left in that book it will be the book for this prompt. So let's zoom it up. <laughs> no, okay, that's okay. That's okay, I will get to a funny story one day. All right, so we are gonna read The Last Chance Library by Freya Sampson. I picked this up when I was up north with one of my friends at her cabin and there was like a little bookstore and I saw this and I was like, hmm, let's pick it up. Um, all right, the next prompt we have is a book with a one word title. Now, in my head I was thinking maybe like the something would work because I don't know some people don't count the as a word it's like more of an article um but no 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 I nope we ain't going there because 
I decided I do have a book that is one word. You know, there's books like throttled, collide, icebreaker, like one word. That's what I was looking for. And I was looking, I was like, okay, I have the selection. Okay. I have the, you know, I have that, the maidens, like, but guess what? Well, I'm putting on the TBR. Twilight. Yes. Um, <laughs> I've never read Twilight. And I did pick this up from my library because uh, they withdrawn this so it was free. <laughs> I literally saw it on the shelf and I was like, free? Twilight? Hell yeah. So I picked up Twilight. Um, I've never read it. I feel like that I'm about to turn 25, I should read Twilight, just so I am cultured in it. Um, but yeah, we're gonna put Twilight on the TBR. Oh boy, that shook the camera. Sorry about that. Twilight, there we go. Alrighty, the next prompt is a fantasy book. Now, I do have a lot of fantasy books because fantasy is like one of my favorite um, genres of books, but I only picked three to spin for because these are the three that I really want to like read this month or just get to they're kind of like top priority um while the rest I mean I do want to get to but I decided to only do three so the three that I chose were The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert uh The Vampire Diaries which I think it'd be really funny if I got this read with Twilight um, and this is book one and two so the awakening and the struggle <laughs> and here we go A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Mass because I have yet to read it these are the three let's spin to see what we get for a fantasy book Oh boy. <laughs> okay, so we're not reading the Hazelwood. Now we could have a very like 2012 reading with Vampire Diaries and Twilight, or we're just gonna kick the bucket and read Akatar. Let's see, let's see. I'm not even looking. What is it? Hello? Oh, okay. Akatar, I'm sorry, I'm not reading you this month. Maybe. <laughs> but we're having a 20, like, what is this, 2012 or something? I don't even know. Um, 2013, like, literally, like, teenage me reading, because we're going to read The Vampire Diaries, book one and two. Um, the struggle, or The Awakening and The Struggle, because they're both in that book. Uh, okay, next one is your most recent purchase. Now, my most recent purchase um, was when I was on vacation. Uh, we stopped at a lot of Books A Million. If you don't know what Books A Million is, it's just like Barnes and, no Barnes and Noble. But I think it's a little bit better because they have bargain books. Uh, I know Barnes and Noble has a bar bargain area, but it's not as good as Books A Million, okay? Because I found book lovers for $6.97. Okay, $7, okay? And I'm trying to grab all these Emily Henry books so I have them in my library. And so here we go. We got book lovers um, to read. Uh, and then all I have left after that is funny stories. So reading all of Emily Henry's like romance books. I know she has like other books. Like she had like a sci-fi book and all that. Maybe I'll read those. But I want to get like all of these books out of the way. You feel? So that was... Um, my most recent purchase and that was when I was on vacation as you can see I still have the receipt in there <laughs> so then the middle space is always the server's pick for book of the month and the book of the month that the server chose was the grandest games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes and I'm probably not going to read that just because I've never read any of her books. I've never read the Inheritance Inheritance Games or anything like that. And a lot of people said you should read that just so you get an idea. I, so I'm probably not going to read this month's book of the month. 
Um, so we're just gonna leave that open for right now. Um, we're just gonna skip it, okay? Because I don't think it's fair for me to put it on my TBR when I haven't even read like the other like series she's wrote and stuff. So we're just gonna skip that one. All right, the next prompt is a book that starts with the letter M. The two books that I have are, I mean, they're not exactly, they start with the, but then M, if that makes sense. <laughs> uh, we have The Maidens by Alex McClarities, 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 whatever that, him, okay. We have The Maidens and we have The Mysterious Benedict Society by Trenton Lee Stewart. So, um, again, they both start with the, but the next word starts with an M. That counts, right? So it's a 50-50 chance for either or. Let's see what we get. Okay. We are gonna be reading The Mysterious Benedict Society, which I literally have no idea what this is about because I just picked it up at Goodwill and I feel like I've seen this or heard about this, so I picked it up. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything about this book, but I'm excited to um, read it. Let's see. From my understanding, okay, this is what it says. After passing a series of mind-bending tests, four children are selected to go on a secret mission that requires them to go undercover at the Learning Institute for the Very Enlightened, where the only rule is there are no rules. So kind of like uh, Miss Peregrine's Home of Peculiar Kids, or I know... Um, the house in the cerulean sea there's like magical kids so kind of like that little like magical children okay on the tbr <laughs> all right so the next one is a book that i've owned for over six months now looking at all the books that i have in these piles a lot of books i just bought within the last like three months okay and usually if i buy a book i want to read it right away so um I don't think I have a book I've owned for over six months. The first one I thought of was Throne of the Fallen, but I read Throne of the Fallen by Carrie Mascopko, um recently this summer, and so <laughs> can't use that. So I was just kind of thinking this was going to be a free pick or a free choice, and from the looks of what I have so far on my TBR, I have a lot of fantasy and I have two romance, so I think to even it out, I'm going to add, because I really think this cover is so cute and I really want to read this book, because um, just because the cover. Um, I'm going to put Plot Twist by Erin La Rosa, because, again, this cover is so cute. <laughs> like. I literally picked up this book because of the cover. I straight up was like, guy, tattoos, girl, red hair, green eyes. Hmm. <laughs> but um, again, I have no idea what it's about. It's I think it's like he's like a like it was like a pop star, like a teen pop star type deal or like a celebrity, and she's a romance author. That's why she's got a book. But yeah. I'm gonna put that on my TBR because I've been wanting to read this since I got it. Um, the next prompt that we have is a book that is not set in your country. So I had to do a little bit of research for some books. Um, again, I kind of picked a couple books that I wanted to read and kind of looked to see where they were set. So these are the options that we have. We have A Man Called Ove. Um, this takes place in Sweden from what Google told me. Not sure if that's true, but it says it takes place in Sweden. We have Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. This takes place on an island, Moreau Island in the Pacific Ocean. And then we have The Maidens, which takes place in England at, um, or like Cambridge. Is that in England? I think so. Um, on like a college campus. So those are the three choices. So The Maidens back in the, the lineup for maybe potentially being read this month. We'll see. Okay. 
All right, so we are going to be reading A Man Called Ove by Frederick Bachman. And if, he's a pretty popular um, author. I know he has a lot of other books and all that, so I thought, why not try this? I think I picked this up at the thrift store, the thrift store and um, I know nothing about it, so exciting. I don't, like, I literally, is it, like, what is this? Just like a lit fit? Lit fit? Lit fit. Yeah. Lit fic? Fic. Literary fiction. <laughs> That's what I was trying, trying to say. Oh, there's someone's name in here. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So there we go. Okay. I got a lot of books on here and I'm kind of, don't know if I'll get through all of them. <laughs> but we'll see. So in the last and final prompt that we have is a anticipated five star read. Now you could say, well, Kelly, you did have Akatar. That's a five star read right there. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know because from what I've been told, it gets better throughout the series. Okay. So then therefore maybe I'm like, mm, maybe not a five star, not my anticipated five star. Okay, I'm not anticipating this to be a five star. I gotta lower my expectations. So then when I do actually get to reading this, I'm like, whoa, and then I do give it a five star, okay? But my anticipated five star from, from what I've read from her, I'm gonna say, <laughs> funny story. So we got two Emily Henry books that we're reading this month. This is gonna be my pick, funny story. Um, because, again, this is not my copy. This is actually one of my friends that I'm borrowing. And I feel bad that I still have it. So I need to read it so I can give it back to her. Because um, I'm a good friend. <laughs> um, but yeah, from what I've heard about this book, it just sounds exactly what like I would love. Okay? This man, this man, Miles, sounds just... Like, from what it sounds like, sounds like Nick and Jess from New Girl. That's... And I love them. I love them so I feel like I would love this book so this is an anticipated five-star read um, so there we go we got two Emily Henry books on the TBR which one would I read first Ooh, I kind of want to read book lovers first and then funny story to kind of compare the two and like how her writing changed is that a good idea? Maybe. All right, so this month we have a lot of books on the TBR. I think I have a lot more books on the TBR than I did last month. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight books. Is that more? Yeah, it's one more than last month, which is, I mean, that's not that bad. <laughs> but let's kind of, we'll just go through um, each book for each prompt just as a recap. So for our anticipated five-star read, we have Funny Story by Emily Henry. For a book not set in your country, I have a book, a book, A Man Called Ove by uh, Frederick Bachman. Um, for a book you've owned for over six months, I don't have a book that I've owned for over six months. So I just did like a free choice and I just put Plot Twist by Erin LaRosa. For a book that starts with the letter M, I have The Mysterious Benedict Society. For a recent purchase, we got Book Lovers by Emily Henry. For a fantasy book, we have The Vampire Diaries, The Awakening and the Struggle, book one and two. For a one word title book, we have Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. And for a book with a person on the cover, we have The Last Chance Library. I mean, this has multiple people on the cover. But we have The Last Chance Library. Um, the one prompt that I'm not going to be reading is Book of the Month, because I kind of already explained that. But there we go. Those are all the books that are on my TBR. Um, I'm very, very excited to read the Emily Henry books this month, so um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure you comment below what are some of your books that you are planning to read in the month of August, now that it's summer slowly coming to an end, which is so disappointing because, again, I'm sick and it's like I feel like I'm wasting my summer being sick, <laughs> um, and school will be starting soon. so. I'm going to be sad because I won't be posting as much as I want to, but we'll see what life is like. Maybe I will, maybe I won't, who knows? But yeah, let me know what books you're planning to read for the month of August. So that's about it. Thanks for watching. Bye!